Hi everybody, Lori Finkelstein Reader here at LFR headquarters and Saria Finkelstein has agreed to do her live buyer consultation today here in our office. Please, please post your questions and as we get towards the end, Saria will gladly pick a few and answer them. I hope that you guys get lots of great tips. This buyer consultation is very powerful and it's really working for our team and we want to share it with you. Here we go guys. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. We're super excited to share this with you. Um, as she said, I will be answering questions afterwards, so please hold tight and I'll try to make this as short and painless as possible. So I wanna thank you guys for coming in here today. It really does mean so much that you took time out of your busy schedules to be here today, so I really appreciate that. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us, sir. Awesome. So I wanna get started and I wanna tell you a little bit about our team, but I don't wanna spend too much time on that because today is really about you. And why we're here today is to really find out not just what it is you're looking for, but why it is you're looking for it. Because I wanna be able to go out and do that work for you. You guys aren't realtors. You are hiring me to go and do that for you, to go out and spend all of that time so that you don't have to. And the reason why we have you come into the office is I'm really a firm believer in the consultative approach. And I'd rather ask you 500 questions and show you five homes than ask you five questions and show you 500. Does that work for you guys? Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So I've been on the team for about seven years now. Um, we, our team has been in the area for 20 years, and we have a team full of specialists. So at every point in the transaction, you will always be dealing with the best person for the job. So when you're buying a home, you deal with a buyer specialist, like me. When you're selling your home, you deal with a selling specialist. We have marketing specialists. We have closing specialists. So you are always in good hands. Oh my goodness. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So that's enough about me. I really want to learn a little bit more about you guys. So if it's okay with you, would you be all right if I go ahead and start asking you some questions? Of sure, course, let's do it. Okay, awesome. I promise there aren't actually 500 questions. Otherwise, we'd be here for a very long time. I was worried. <laughs> awesome. All right, so uh, let me first get both of your email addresses so that I can make sure I've got all the contact information correctly. Um, mine is jill at gmail.com. Okay, and Renee? And I'm Renee at yahoo.com. Perfect. So who's going to be the primary contact here? Probably during the day, it'd be, you'd be best served to get with Jill if there's any That's properties great. that come up. Okay, perfect. So what's the best way to communicate with you? Text, email, text phone? Text is best. So yeah. always text first and yes. see if you're available? Please. And that's always usually the best with me too. Sometimes I'm in appointments and obviously when I'm with clients like you guys, I don't wanna be answering the phone because I wanna make sure that I'm spending my time with you. So it's always best if you text me first okay. and then as soon as I'm available, I'll give you guys a call back. Awesome. Sounds good, I can do that. Perfect. All right, so you are able to speak during work hours. Are you not able to speak during work hours? Well, I can communicate through email. Okay, perfect. Just don't know how quick I'll get back to you with it. Okay, not a problem. So when is the best days and times for you guys to go view homes? Do you want to say weekends probably? I'd say weekends yeah. or any time after six during the week. Okay. And obviously if there's something during the day, um, Jill's schedule is a little bit more flexible. Maybe you can take her out to see it. And okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. That's super important because especially in this market down here in South Florida, if something comes on the market and it's got granite in the kitchen, it's in a good school district, it's flying off the shelf. So we want to make sure that we're not just going on the weekends because if a property comes on the market on Monday, there's no chance it's going to be there on Saturday. Okay. So I'm glad to know you guys have some flexibility and that we can either do the evenings or during the day with you. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now if we found a home today that met all of your needs, would you guys be ready to move forward? Well, I mean, we've only been to a couple open houses. Obviously, that's where we found you. So just not really too familiar with the market. We just did move in from out of state and have been renting for a few months now. So, I mean, how does it usually work? My thought process was to see, you know, quite a few homes mm -hmm. just to get, you know, an idea of the areas and what's going to work for us. Okay. Um, but I, so I don't know if the first house, you know, the first couple would, would necessarily be something we'd be ready to put a contract in on. Right, and I can totally understand and appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So what we've really been working on and why we do the consultative approach is because you're not hiring me to go look at 30 houses that aren't gonna work for you, otherwise you're gonna hate me. I'm gonna waste all of your weekends <laughs> and your evenings when you guys can be at home. Right. What we're gonna do today is really narrow it down so that we go and see the best houses first. Most of my buyers don't see more than three to five homes, if you believe wow. that. No, wow. Yeah, so it's more often than not, it's the first home that you walk into that's the right home. And that's because of this meeting today. 
we're really going to narrow down everything and find out exactly what it is that you're looking for so that we can go and find that house first. Because if it's your favorite house and they're your top five, it's probably somebody else's top five. So we want to go see those first so we don't waste time going to see other homes that don't work for you just so we can feel like we've went and saw the right. homes everywhere because you're going to lose out on the right house during that time. Makes sense. Okay, awesome. So what is prompting your move? Well, like Renee said, we just moved here from out of state. Okay, awesome. So, yeah. so are you moving here for a job? Is it family that brought you here? Or what brought you to Sunnyside, yeah, Florida? Work, work brought us here, and honestly, the weather as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do have two young ones, so we figured make the move now and not make the transition harder for them down the road. Awesome. And how old are your kids? Seven and five. Perfect. So are schools important? Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Did you guys have certain schools in mind that you were thinking of, or...? We were thinking, we kind of were looking at the Davie area. We heard the schools in Davie were really good, so mm -hmm. we're, we've been doing some research there. Okay, great. Yeah, they do have fantastic schools all the way through. So it's very common that that's where people are moving to when they're looking for good okay. schools. So you did good research. Good, very good. good. Awesome. So um, now remind me, what type of mortgage is it that you guys are doing, and um, what percentage will you be putting down? We'll do it a uh, conventional 10% down. Okay, awesome. And what was the comfortable purchase price range for you? I think right now, yeah, I know you refer to your lender, Joey, at First Choice Financial, and I think anywhere between four to four twenty-five. Okay, awesome. So now, what's really important, and I'm sure that Joey went over that with you because he's mm -hmm. awesome. But the most important thing is really your monthly payment. So I always want to make sure, whether you're working with Joey or you're working with anyone, that you go to them and tell them how much you're comfortable spending per month, because that's really the most important thing. The purchase price really is neither here nor there. The monthly payment is what's going to make sure that you guys are comfortable. You can go out to dinner, you can go on vacation with your kids, and make sure that you guys are in a comfortable position. And that's my goal, is to keep you within that comfort zone. Very good. Okay? Awesome. Um, so is there anyone else involved in the purchasing decision? No, nope, yeah. just us. Isn't that a great feeling? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, so how long have you guys been looking? I know you said you went to a couple of open houses. I mean, we've been looking on the internet since we since we came down here, and we are familiar because we are renting in East Fort Lauderdale. Okay. But um, you know, probably just about two three months right now. Okay, we've only great. seen about two open houses so far. Awesome. Well, the second one was the best one, obviously. That was not me. <laughs> You're right. You're right about that. Awesome. So, are you guys looking for a single family home or a townhouse? Single, single family, family preferable. Okay. Now you said preferable. Does that mean it has to be a single family, or you would consider a townhouse? Well, it just depends, you know, the size of the home, what the finishes are, and we, we don't want to do a lot in terms of updating. Oh, we really want a backyard, really because want of the kids. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Awesome. So why don't we talk a little bit about that backyard for a second? Okay. Tell me a little bit about what your perfect backyard looks like to you. Oh, I know that. I'd like a pool, definitely. Okay. Still some space. We do have um, three dogs, so a little bit of room for the dogs and. Um, you know, a covered area, because it's so hot. I'd like to be mm. able to have some shade while we're back there. So you're looking for a lanai? Yes. Okay, great. Everyone always doesn't know that term. They always have a hard time saying it. All my clients, <laughs> they call it lanai, lanis. Like, lanai. They can't figure it yes, out. Yes, we want a lanai. Awesome. So now, you said that you wanted a pool. So let's talk a little bit more. So let's say that the yard, most of the yard is taken up by the pool. Is that going to work for you guys or no? Because you need the room for the dogs. Yeah, we're going to need a little bit of green space. Okay. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now... If the backyard was large enough, but it was all paved and there was no grass, that wouldn't work for you either, correct? Correct. Okay, so we need grass. Awesome. And you said you were not open to renovations, is that right? Correct. Right. So is that of any kind? Would you be willing to do a bathroom? Is there anything that you would be willing to do? I mean, we really want everything up to date, especially the kitchen, the bathrooms, the floorings. We just don't want to move in somewhere and live in a construction zone for the next four to five months. Totally understand. So let me ask it in a little bit of a different way. Does it need to be updated or does it need to be clean and functional? Preferably updated. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so, um, and you said you've got two kids, so there'll be four people living in the house? Yes. Correct. Awesome. So what do you like about your current home that if you could, you'd like to recreate in your new home? Well, a kitchen is really important to me. I love to cook. What about um, your kitchen is important? Um, I like space. I need to have good counter space. Okay. Anything nice else that's important? Yes, okay. definitely. Double ovens would be fantastic. But that's not a must-have? Not a must-have, but I'd like it if we could find it. Okay, so what if we had a nice <clears throat> kitchen that was spacious, 
but it didn't have upgraded appliances. That's something that you guys would be willing to do? I mean, yeah, we'd consider yeah. it. Okay, okay, great. So now, what is it, what don't you like about your current home or any other home you've lived in that if you could, you wanna make sure you definitely don't have in this home? The, well, we're in a condo now, but the, the home we were in previously was, it, it was just very tight. It was okay. two stories, it was very boxy, not a lot of open living space. Yeah. Do you know what the square footage was on that one? It was about 1,800 square feet. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for something larger than that? Yes, definitely. Larger or, or a little better proportion. Okay. Now you mentioned about the stairs. Does the, is, are you not interested in stairs in the new home? Stairs are fine. The problem we were having in that house was, you know, the kitchen was in one area and then the family room was in one area. Just if the kids Very were choppy. in a different... Yeah, I like when I'm cooking to be able to see the kids in the family right. room if possible. Okay, awesome. So now if it is a two-story, do you have a preference to where the master is? I like a master down and the kids up. I like to have a little separation. Especially as they're getting close Absolutely. to the teenage years, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> awesome. So now what if the master was up and all the other bedrooms were down? Would that still work for you? I think so. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we just want to make sure the other bedrooms are as far away as possible from the master. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. So location. Are we only considering Davy, or are there any other areas that you'd be considering? I mean, whatever you would suggest. I, I'm sure there's other cities with good school districts. So okay, awesome. So you guys can We're go. open. Awesome. Absolutely. So right. there are a few other cities that I'm going to recommend, and we can do a search on those as well. But Davy is probably where you're going to end up, just based on hearing what you're looking for oh, in a home, in a community. I think that that would be a good fit. But I'll throw a couple other areas in there for you as Perfect. well. Perfect. Thanks. Awesome. So how many bedrooms and bathrooms are you guys looking for? I would say four bedrooms and at least three bathrooms. Would two and a half bathrooms work for you? Yeah, I mean, it could work. I'd, okay. I'd prefer three, but if, if, two, if it's a great house and it only had two and a half, we'd be okay. That would work? Okay, yes. perfect. So um, what about an HOA? Is that something that's important to you guys? Or I mean, I've heard horror stories about them, so it, it's tough to say. Okay, so if you had a preference, would you say you'd rather not have one? I mean, what are the advantages of, of an HOA and, and the disadvantages? It really is a case-by-case -case basis. Some communities, they're going to provide more amenities for you, and in some cases, they're not going to do much, and you don't really know why you're paying a fee because nothing's coming from it. Right. So it really just depends on that neighborhood. So we can kind of just go case-by-case, -case, and when we got home comes up, I can let you know what that HOA provides, and okay. we can decide if that would be a okay. good match for that you. That sounds good, good to me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, all right, and you said you do have two dogs, right? Awesome. Three, actually. Three. Oh my goodness. Are yeah. they big, small? Small. Okay, great. And are you looking for a home with a garage? Definitely. Definitely. For storage. Does a one space. car work, or do we need two cars? I, at a minimum, one car. Minimum one. Okay. So now, if let's say that it was a two-car garage, and one of the cars of the garage was converted into a bedroom, would that still work for you? Because you have that one with space. Well, the, I'm probably just going to use the garage for storage, so if okay. I could use that room for storage, that would work. Okay, awesome. So even if it was a one-car garage, but it was converted into a room, you could still right. use it for storage. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, great. What about a water view? Oh, it would be nice, but not mandatory. So that would be a bonus? It would definitely be a bonus. Awesome. Is there anything I missed? Um, I don't like carpet. If you can, can you add that to the search or is that too difficult? So um, we want to put as with the multiple listing service, you we always go by less is best. Okay. So in South Florida, there are 60,000 realtors. About 59,800 don't do everything just as well as oh, the others wow. do. So unfortunately, we want to put as little information in there as possible because otherwise we're going to eliminate properties that might actually work for you. Okay. For instance, if I put in there I can't put in a minimum of two and a half baths because if I put in a minimum of a half bath, if it's a three full bath, it's not gonna come up. So we wanna put in as little as possible. I'd rather us look at a few extra online that don't work for you than miss out on some that do. Do okay. you agree? Absolutely. Okay, awesome. So now that you mentioned carpet, I wanna get into that with you for a minute. So I wanna talk to you about your five must-haves. And these are your non-negotiables. If the house doesn't have it, you're not buying it. Okay. In any specific order, what would you say those must-haves are? I'd say definitely the um, the upgrades okay. in the home. And then the, open the green space. The green space. Yeah, in the back for the dogs. Okay. So now, 
if it was paved, would you be willing to pull up the pavers so that you would have grass? If the space was there, you would be willing to do that. Okay. Consider it. Okay, so then I would say that's not a must-have then, because we could find a way to make it work if there wasn't green space, as long as there was the ability to make green space. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, yeah. awesome. Um, and like I said, a good size kitchen. Okay. That's non-negotiable. Because that's how you can't really change that. Right. Okay. And now you'd mentioned the carpet. So I know that you guys really aren't interested in doing any types of renovations, but I want to ask you a question. If we found the perfect house, and it was in the right school district. It had the green area for the dogs. It had the big kitchen with the double ovens and everything of your dreams. Yeah. But a couple of the rooms had carpet. Are you not going to move forward with the home? No, I would. No, I think yeah. we'd, we'd be able to get past that. Okay, perfect. Because okay. that's a super easy fix. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we know exactly what your must-haves are. Okay. This is really just an exercise to make sure that we're on the same page and that you guys really, there aren't too many things that you have to have. There's a lot of things that we want, but not necessarily a lot of things that we need. Okay, that so makes sense. we really only have two. Most people only have two or three, so you guys are right on track. Well, the school district as well. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so a school And then op definitely open living space area. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now what I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit about the three types of buyers that we have. Okay. So we have A buyers, B buyers, and C buyers. And I'd like for you to be a part of the decision of which type of buyer that you are. Okay. So an A buyer is someone who is literally going to be homeless within 30 to 45 days. Their house is already sold. They have a lease that's ending. There's something that's making them have to move. Okay. Now an A buyer, that's someone that I'm going to be calling every single day. We're going to be look, going to look at every single house that hits the market that could even possibly work for you because I want to make sure that you're not homeless. That's my job. Okay. Okay. And then a B buyer is someone who very well may purchase in the next 30 to 45 days, but they don't have to. They don't have something that's making them buy. They're waiting for the right house maybe, or they've got their lease that's still a little mm -hmm. while out. They've got a couple of things that they have to take care of before then, but they might buy in that next 30 to 45 mm -hmm. days. Okay. That's someone, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be calling you every single day, I'm gonna be calling you once, twice a week to make sure that we're still going out there, we're seeing everything that hits the market, that matches your criteria, and we're getting to you into your home as soon as possible. Okay. And a C buyer is really an investor. That's someone who's just waiting for the right house to come on the market, they're waiting for that deal, and they're really just waiting for that needle in the haystack. Got it. Right. And that's someone who I'm gonna call probably once a month. So now the reason that I want to go over this is because if you were an A buyer and I was giving you C level service, you're going to fire me because mm -hmm. I'm not calling right. you enough. And if the other way around, if you were a C buyer and I was calling you every single day, you're going to fire me then too because I'm way too much up your rear end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to know where you guys see yourself on that scale and which type of buyer you think that you are. I mean, based on what you're, you're saying, probably a B buyer because our okay. lease is still a little bit further out, okay. but awesome. we are open to, I think we discussed breaking the lease if, yes. if something if does right come up. Come along. Yes. Okay, so you're a B plus buyer. You're on your way That's to being it. an A. My, that I like good to it. Me. Awesome. So if you guys could just sign this really quick sure. so we're just agreeing that that's the type of buyer you are at this time, I would appreciate that. Yeah. And this is just so I can set the ex expectation of what type of service you can expect. Okay. I want you to know from start to finish what you're going to expect from our end. And this is the first step of that process. That sounds really awesome. good. Thank you. Awesome. So before we go ahead and start looking at properties on the computer, what I want to do is go over the home purchasing process with you. Would that be okay? Yep. Yes. Yeah, awesome. I know you guys are first time home buyers. That's my favorite. That's my yes. niche. So I wanted to just go over this so you have a pretty good idea. Okay. So this is your roadmap to your home purchase. And the first step is going to be selecting a real estate agent. That's me. You already did that. Congratulations. <laughs> We're excited. <laughs> and the next step you've already done too, which is obtaining your financial pre-approval. So you guys are ahead of the game. Awesome. Now we're here and we're analyzing your needs in a buyer consultation. And the next step is going to be selecting properties. So after this, we're going to go ahead and put all of your criteria into the system together so that we can take a look at all of the homes that match your criteria, see if there's any adjustments we have to make, are we being realistic in our search, mm -hmm. and we can really narrow that down together. Okay. Because if I went and did that search on my own and I called you and said, oh, there's only two matches, you don't know me from Joe Schmo. 
you would be like, right. what do you mean? I'm looking on Zillow. There's 500 matches on Zillow. <laughs> so you want to know what really is out there, and this is how I can show you what's gotcha. actively on the market. That's a good point, sir, because we obviously we've been looking. We do see a ton of houses on Zillow yeah. and all these different mm -hmm. websites. I mean, are those accurate listings? What are your thoughts on those? Zillow can be challenging. Mm -hmm. It can be fascinating. <laughs> um, the, the problem is that a lot of the homes, it's just not up to date as the MLS okay. is. So a lot of times you're going to see properties on there that aren't actually available. And the last thing okay. I want you to do is fall in love with a house or a community and then find out that that home really isn't available. Right. So I'm going to give you access to our search portal so that you can look in there and make sure that everything you're looking at is truly available. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So after we go through the homes, I want you to tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be watching your faces. And if you make a face like, ugh, I wanna know why. Because okay. I wanna do all that research on my own. So if there's something that you see and it, you love it, or if there's something you see and you hate it, tell me, because that's only gonna help me find you the right house faster. Okay. I didn't build it, I didn't buy it, I will not be offended. Gotcha. <laughs> all right, so then after that, we're gonna select the homes that are your favorites. Okay. And then I'm gonna have you guys go home and you're gonna duke it out and you're gonna narrow it down to your top five, okay? And then we're gonna go and see those first. Because okay. if they're your favorites, they're probably someone else's too. So we wanna see those first, okay? okay? So after that, we're gonna go and view homes. And when you're going to view homes, you may be going to see a home with me, and you may be going to see a home with someone else on my team. So I wanna spend a second telling you about that. Okay. So we work with a lot of buyers who previously had bad experiences with other realtors. And one of the most common complaints that we got was that they were missing out on houses because the realtor wasn't available and they weren't able to work around their schedule. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get them in to see the houses on time and they were already off the market by the time they got to see them. So we saw that hole and we found a way to fill it. And what we did is we've hired multiple showing agents and these are people that I've personally trained myself. They're basically my little Vanna Whites. Oh, so idea. my promise to you is that whenever you wanna go and see a home, whether it's myself or one of my showing agents, we will always be there to get you in to see it. Oh, perfect. Our okay. promise, yes. So our promise is that you will never miss out on a house on our accord. We will always work around your schedule. Does that work for you? That perfect. sounds really yep. good. Awesome. My assistant Janice will always let you know who it is that you're gonna be meeting, what time you're gonna be meeting them, and where it is you're gonna be meeting them. Okay. You don't need me to tell you this is the kitchen, this is the bathroom. I'm pretty sure you can figure those things out, right? Right, absolutely. You're hiring me so that I can get you to the contract. I can write your contract and get you to the closing and we can get you into your home as soon as possible. Perfect. Sounds good. Awesome. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and write an offer. And this is a really important piece because it's so important to have a strong offer. This is a very tough market. So if our offer isn't strong, you're not gonna have an opportunity. The chances of us being in a multiple offer situation, especially if you're looking in the best school district in the county for a house that's already updated and you're in the 400,000s, you're going to most likely be in a multiple offer situation. So having a strong offer is extremely, extremely important. How do we set ourselves apart in that kind of scenario? Well, I'm gonna help you with that. Okay, good. So one of your ways is by you being here. Our team has been in the area for 20 years and we have extremely strong relationships with the realtors in this community. And when those realtors get an offer from us, they know that you're not some buyer that I just met in Walmart and was like, hey, you wanna go see some houses? <laughs> you're someone who I've sat down with, I've verified that you're pre-approved, and then I can get you to the closing table. And that means a lot to them in this market, mm -hmm. okay? The second way is actually with the lender that we work with, because the lender we work with works just as hard as we do. He answers the phone in the evenings, he answers the phone on the weekends, and that's just unfortunately not something that's commonplace in the lending industry. So after they get a call from me presenting the offer and telling them why they should go with our offer and why they should work with our team, then they're gonna get a follow-up call from the lender telling them everything that they've, uh, they've um, taken from you guys and how strong of a buyer you are and why they should go with you. And this is a true way that we can really stand out from the rest because everyone else is just sending an offer and an email and they're not following it up with a call. Gotcha, okay, okay. okay. that sounds good. So the third way, this is actually my favorite. So as you guys know, I'm a buyer specialist, and over the years I've tested out a lot of different theories to see what really helps my buyer's offers get accepted. And this is my favorite. It's what we call the cheese letter. It is literally the cheesiest letter you have ever written in your entire life, directly from you to the seller. Okay. 
Okay. And we're going to submit it along with your offer. You're so gonna you, have to write that. Check. I was. I'm all over. That's it. Yeah, definitely that gonna be jail. Yeah, I'm got it. <laughs> so you're gonna walk. You're gonna say that as soon as you drove down the street, you could see your kids trick or treating down the street, learning to swim in the pool. Oh, I can't. Literally wait. the biggest cheese whiz you've okay. ever seen. Okay. And we're gonna attach the cutest picture you've ever taken, put it right on the letter, and submit it along with your offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because at some point it has to get emotional for them. The, all of the offers are going to be very similar, similar purchase price, similar closing dates, etc. So that is what's going to be that helps our offer stand out amongst the rest because it puts a face to the contract makes so and makes sense. them want to help yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Awesome. I can send you some samples so you can kind of get it started. And then once we go and see the house that you love, take a look around the house. See if you see any sports teams or anything that you can really connect with so you can mention it in the letter. Got it. Give an extra little <laughs> juice. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. So then the next part is going to be time to negotiate and hopefully I'll get to beat up the listing agent a little bit for you and try and get you guys a deal. Now I'm always going to be honest with you and give you my professional advice. If I think that we can get you a deal, I'm going to tell you. If I think that we have to go in over list price to get the property, I'm going to tell you as well. You are always able to do with that as you please, but I'm always going to give you my advice and then you guys will have the final decision. Okay. Sounds okay? great. Awesome. So then after that, your offer gets accepted. Yay. <laughs> then we've got the fun stuff. Okay, so next you have a seven to 10 day inspection period, depending on what we agree on with the sellers. So now during this time, I wanna spend a minute to talk about this because this is extremely important. During your inspection period, you're able to back out of the contract for any reason without any risk to your deposit. And the reason why I wanna stress how important that is, is because I know you have a busier schedule and let's say we go and see a home the second it comes on the market during the day and he's not available for a few more days to go and see it. If you even think that this is gonna be the right house for you, I'm going to urge you to write an offer. Because if we don't write an offer today and we wait three days, you might not have a chance. But if we write an offer today and then we go and see it with Renee a few days later and he decides, you know what, I think that it's missing this, this really isn't what I'm looking for, I can still get you out. But without putting in an offer, you might not have a chance to have a chance. Does that make sense? It does, makes yeah. Sense. Awesome. So now during that time, you're also going to have a home inspection. You'll have a full home inspection, roof inspection, and termite inspection. Okay. You're gonna learn everything you ever wanna know about this house and everything you mm -hmm. didn't wanna know about this house. So this house that you walked into and you thought was your perfect dream home, you're gonna get a fat packet like this that's telling you everything that's wrong with it. 99.9% .9 of that stuff means nothing. There's gonna be on there that there's an outlet cover that's cracked, that there's a light bulb that's not working. That stuff doesn't matter. We're looking for the major ticket items that affect the material value of the home. Electrical, plumbing, roof, things that we couldn't see. So just so you understand, let's say we go and see the home and there was a big hole in the wall. We obviously saw that and we're gonna take that into consideration when we go ahead and write the offer. Okay. When that comes up in the inspection, we can't then go and ask for a credit for it because we knew about that. Does gotcha. that make sense? It does make sense. We're looking for things that we didn't know. And what does that cost? So that's going to be anywhere from $300 to $500. Okay. And this is basically gambling money. And the reason that I say that is because if we spend the money on the inspection and you're not happy with what you found, I can still get you out of the contract, your deposit is protected, but the inspector did their job. Okay. So you would lose this money. Okay. Got it. But hopefully we don't have that issue. Very few of our deals actually fall through and we're able to negotiate a way, a win-win for you and the seller to make it work out. Do you okay. find that sellers are open to, to making repairs or how does that work? It really depends. So there's three things that you can do when it comes to inspections. And I'll tell you all of them and I'll tell you my preference. Okay. Okay. So one is, let's say there's about $2,000 worth of issues that we're negotiating. Mm -hmm. One is you ask for the sellers to repair it. And that's not really something that I prefer because when you do that, the seller's fixing it to sell it. They're not fixing it to live in it. Oh, it's a very a different thing. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna fix it the way you would to make sure it's done properly. Okay. So if we can avoid that, we're going to try that, okay? The other way is by reducing the purchase price. And again, that's not really the way that I prefer to do it because let's say we reduce your purchase price by $2,000, maybe we're talking about a $5 difference in your mortgage payment, $10 difference in your mortgage payment. Right. And at that point, it really doesn't make sense. You don't have that physical money to make the changes mm -hmm. after the closing. So the ideal way that I do it is a reduction of your closing costs. So that way you bring $2,000 less to the closing table and you have that money physically to be able to fix whatever gotcha. the issue is after closing. That sounds awesome. Very awesome. good. Okay, cool. So now after that, we're good to go. We keep moving forward. Our next hurdle is the appraisal. 
And the appraisal is when we're going to determine what the market value is of the home. A third party is going to come out, they're gonna look at all the recent closed sales, they're gonna check out the comparables, and they're gonna figure out what the true value is of the home. In a perfect world, it comes in right at contract price, we're good to go, we keep moving forward, but there are possibles, possibilities that that doesn't happen. So now if it comes in over, we never tell the seller, you could buy a house with equity and you refer me all of your right. friends and family. <laughs> now the other option is if it comes in low. So now if it comes in low, let's say we're under contract for 425 and the appraisal comes in at 420, the issue is that the bank is only going to be willing to loan up to 420 because otherwise it's a bad investment for them. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Awesome, so we have a $5,000 discrepancy at that point. So we can do one of three things. One is we ask the seller to come down to the appraised value and sometimes the seller will say, okay, that's what it's worth, I'll sell it for that. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen as often as we'd like it to. On the other end is the seller says is a complete jerk and they say, no, you said you were paying 425, I want 425, that's it, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. You would have to come up with an additional $5,000 on top of your closing costs and on top of your down payment to make up the spread. More likely than not, we find a way to meet in the middle, they come down a little bit, we come up a little bit, everyone's happy and we keep moving forward. Okay? okay. okay. So whenever that time comes, we can go over that again. Okay. Other than that, behind the scenes, you're gonna have the title company doing tons of boring stuff that you don't even wanna know about. They're gonna make sure that the, there's no liens or fines on the property and that you're purchasing it with clear title. And that's part of your closing costs as well, which is about two to 3% of the purchase price. Gotcha. Okay. Now your appraisal is about 500 to $550. And that again is gambling money. Because if it comes in low and we can't figure out a way to make it work out, again, the appraiser did their job. So figure to gamble with about $1,000. That's a pretty good So estimate. we pay that up front as well? Correct. Okay. You're going to pay that once we get to that point. We don't order the appraisal until after the inspection because we don't want you to spend the money on the appraisal unless we know that Nothing you're moving forward. forward. Yeah, that makes sense. So as soon as the inspection period is good to go, then the lender will go ahead and order the appraisal at that point. Perfect. Then everything else will be paid at closing, sir? Exactly. Okay. okay. Everything else will be due at that point. Great. Awesome. All right, so now at this point is when I would sit down with them and we would go into the MLS, we'd plug in all of their information, and this is your opportunity to really help them narrow down and show them that you listened to what they were asking for and what their needs were. So you're gonna go through each home, you're gonna delete the ones that won't work, you're gonna favorite the ones that will work, and then you're gonna let them go home and duke it out at that point. So after that, after we go through all the homes, at this point you've really shown your value. So you want to then go in for the close, and you want to talk to them about hiring you as their realtor. So we're going to talk about that now. Okay. So now before you guys go, I really want to thank you guys for coming in here today. I hope that you guys learned something. Oh, I did. No, very it's important. wonderful. Are you thank excited? You. I'm so we excited. Are. Awesome. Yeah. So this last form that I want to go over here with you, this is our VIP buyer agreement. And when you look through this, you're gonna see all of the things that I'm gonna do for you that all the other realtors aren't going to do for you and why you should hire me to be your buyer specialist. Okay. okay? okay. Now, we do have a $400 fee for working with our team that is not due until the closing. So what that means is unless I do my job, I don't get paid. Does that seem fair? It does. It does. Okay. What does that go to our serial? That is for our, our uh, closing coordinators. Okay. So they are going to be your best friend by the end. They're going to make sure all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, they're going to let you know when your inspections are, when your appraisal is, they're going to tell you when your deposits are due, and they're going to make sure that you stay contractually bound. Awesome. Okay. 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 So um, now I only work with a certain amount of buyers at one time because I know how much time it takes to dedicate to a buyer and how much time you actually deserve to have from me. Okay. So because I only work with a certain amount of buyers at one time, all I ask is that if I'm gonna dedicate myself to you, that you dedicate yourselves to me as well. And don't go cheat on me with any of these other realtors. Gotcha. Now, that being said, it is not a marriage, it is just an engagement. So if you're ever unhappy at any point in time, we rip up the agreement, no hard feelings, no cost to you, I will keep the ring. <laughs> but other than that, we're good to go. It hasn't happened, so don't try me, but you do have that option. So I wanna make sure you understand that this agreement is only valid if you continue working with us and that the $400 will only be charged at closing. Very good. Got it. Is that something you're comfortable with? Mm -hmm. I am. Okay, great. I'm gonna give this to you. And while you're reviewing that, I just wanna tell you guys a little something. So I wanna tell you about our promise. And our promise to you is that we are going to give you a customer experience that you honestly just can't even imagine. 
I literally drive around with a red carpet in my trunk that I will roll out for you on closing day. Okay? I'm the queen of the cheese, hence the cheese butter. Um, but I want you to understand that we are going to be here every step of the way. Anytime that you have a question, there will always be someone to answer your question. Whether it's myself, one of my showing agents, my assistant, my closing specialist, we always have someone here who's going to be, answer, be able to answer any of your questions. So what I would like is a promise from you. And that is that between now and the end of our transaction, that you will be referring me to your friends and family. Have you ever heard of what's called the RAS? Nope. No, I don't know what that is. So it's your reticular activating system. Oh, wow. So think about when you go to purchase a car and you go and you test drive the car and then all of a sudden you leave the car dealership and you see a billboard with the car on it and there's two cars driving by you on the highway with it and then you pull into Publix yeah, and everywhere. there's four cars there. And it's right. not that everyone went and bought that car that day, it's just that it became forefront to you and you mm -hmm. started noticing it. Mm -hmm. So very similar to when you're purchasing a home. Now that you've got it in your brain, you're gonna hear at least five people between now and the time of closing that you're gonna hear them talk about buying or selling a home. Okay. And your ears are gonna perk up. So when you hear that, I want you to promise me that you're gonna run over to them and you're gonna give them one of my business cards because I wanna help them too. Got it. Is that, can you guys promise me that? I can sure. do that, absolutely. Sure. Awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this here for a minute. I'm gonna okay. come right back. If you have any questions, I'll answer them when you come sure. back. Sure, okay, awesome. So I always like to leave the agreement with them so that they can kind of have their moment alone, they can talk about it, see if they have any issues, and then when I come back in, very, very rarely do they actually have any questions because it's pretty simple. And at this point, you've shown your value. They want to hire you. They're pretty much drooling at this point because they don't want to work with anyone else. So that's really the key to this. If you're not using a buyer representation agreement, why are you working with buyers? They're not your buyers. John Prescott, who was the first person who ever taught me bold, he taught me a huge lesson. And when I first got into the business, I was six months in the business and I was in bold with him. And he asked, who in here is working with buyers? And I was so excited, I raised my hand. I was like, oop, I'm working with five buyers. And he looked at me, he said, oh my God, that is awesome. So how many of those have signed a buyer agency agreement? And I started to really sink down in my chair at that point. And I said, well, none of them. He said, correction. You have zero buyers. And that was a huge light bulb for me. At that point, I really changed the way that I did my business, and I never worked with a buyer after that unless they agreed to work with me. Because there's so many people out there who want to work with you. Why would you choose to work with someone who doesn't want to work with you? It doesn't make too much sense. So at this point, um, I would love to answer any questions if we have any questions. Joy Hudson would like to know how you secured the appointment at the open house to get them to come for a buyer consultation. That's a great question. So again, it's all about your scripts. It's all about showing your knowledge. So when you're at the open house, you better know everything about the neighborhood, all about the comparable sales, anything that's available, because that's your five minute showtime opportunity for you to let them know that they should be working with you. So I'm gonna show them my value at that point, and I'm gonna go for the close at the open house. I'm gonna say, listen, you know, I've got a lot of people who are coming in, I really wanna take time to sit down with you and make sure that I'm understanding exactly what you're looking for. What I'd like to do is set up a time for you to come into my office so that we can go over the home buying process, do a complete market overview, and set up time to go look at homes. <clears throat> I have openings in my schedule for tomorrow at two and Saturday at four, which time works better for you? That's pretty much it. Some people might give you a little bit of a struggle and then it might take you calling them a couple of times to be able to lock down that appointment. But if you're showing them the value at the open house, there shouldn't be any question for why they're not gonna, why they're gonna come into the office. Okay, okay. Uh, Jamie Prezi would like to know, are you using the realtor buyer agreement or a more simple in-house version? We actually do use a simple in-house version. <laughs> we call it the LFR VIP buyer agreement. So we let them know that they are our VIP client and it's going to go through exactly what we're going to do for them and what to expect. And if it's something that you would like a copy of, we'd be happy to send it to you. If you go ahead and post your email address in the thread, we'd be more than happy to send that to you. Heidi Marsh, hello Heidi. Any possibility you would be willing to share your checklist forms? Well, there's a surprise. Absolutely, we can definitely do that. Again, if you go ahead and put your email address in the comments, we'd be more than happy to go ahead and send you our entire buyer packet that we use so you can take a look at it and hopefully make it work for you and your business. Uh, let's
let's see. I think we're good on questions. If there's anything else you want to add, go for it. I just want to thank you guys for being here today. I'm super excited to have all of you here with me. What's that? Tell them to make sure they put in the full email address. Make sure you put in your full email address so that we can make sure that we get that over to you. Otherwise, if you need anything, you can contact me directly on Facebook, Saria Finkelstein. It's like Maria with an S. I promise there will not be another Saria Finkelstein, so you shouldn't have any issue finding me. But if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer any of them because I want to help make all of you guys a rock star buyer agents. Thanks again so much for being with us today, and have an awesome day.